All righty then. It has finally happened. The first pilot show, the first show, the pilot show of the Coach Jess show. Well, you're in for a treat. I will be the man behind the scenes and the lady that will be taking the lead is Coach Jess. Let's bring, let's bring her in. <gasps> can you hear me? I can. Uh, are you sure you can hear me? I. Uh, that's good because we will survive technical difficulties no matter what. Yes, of course, of course. Um, there's a pretty strong possibility that in this pilot show we will run into some challenges. Uh, they probably will come from, and there's a possibility if everybody's watching. Uh, they probably will come as technical difficulties because the rest of it, we got that under complete control. Technical difficulties, we can master. Uh, so if your Bluetooth keep cutting in and out, or, uh, they kind of during that at the beginning here, uh, we may have to go uh, without them. Uh, we'll have to see. But right now, uh, hopefully you can hear me comfortably and I'm not. You can? Okay, good, good. I just want to make sure. Hey, look, I, I want uh, everyone to get an opportunity to know that this is uh, an, uh, well, a show for them. Uh, but um, they won't hear much from me because you're going to be taking the lead. And I'm just happy to be the, the guy in the booth for you. So thank you so much for doing this uh, and letting me be a part of this. I appreciate it. Oh, Paxton, I'm so excited to do this with you. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> eh, you don't know what you're asking for. You don't know what you're <laughs> All right. So, so, uh, so boss. <laughs> my boss so, so I'm I, I want to uh, if you could um, you really are a resiliency recovery relationship coach that helps people focus on how to manage and deal with burnout the floor is yours <laughs> burnout it's a big word it's a big term it it it's a scary word for a lot of people Um I think right now, more people than ever are burnt out, percentage-wise at least, um, with everything that's been going on, with the ups and downs of the last year and a half. Um, it, it's just been exhausting and a stressful time for everyone. And I think now more than ever to have a platform where I can talk about mental wellness and how to become more resilient and how to have better relationships and how to recover from everything not just addictions and things like that but anything else that you know is a stressful situation or time or um traumatic event so burnout is really all encompassing and if you think you are um able to go through life and and wanting to be successful and things like that and not get close to burnout if you don't know much about it beforehand the likelihood of you going into wanting success and being driven towards success without understanding your own limits when it comes to burnout and mental wellness and things like that. Um, unfortunately, it's a very, very common end result for a lot of very uh, performance driven, um, focused people. Uh, so just because you know, you're successful in what you're doing doesn't necessarily mean you're going to avoid burnout, right? You also have to make sure you're taking care of yourself. When it comes to making progress in life, people can be very successful at that, but they may not be successful at knowing when they're reaching that tipping point. Exactly. And that's why it is vital to have your self-awareness uh, kind of tuned in as, as much as possible. Um, because you can't know your limits if you aren't able to acknowledge them. And so if you're constantly surpassing your limits, finding yourself burning out, and then not understanding why it keeps happening to you over and over again, you're not acknowledging those limits. You're still pushing past them. 
And a lot of people who are high performance, very driven, very successful people, they fall into this trap of putting everything and anything that they have into a new project, into, you know, a new job, a new career, a new relationship. Um, and it, it's that it's that drive and that focus really that kind of is our own detriment sometimes because we can't really take our eyes off the prize enough to rest and recoup. Rest and recouping can be one thing, but we're talking about relationships. Yeah. How can a person rest and recoup if they're feeling burnout in their relationship? Boundaries, healthy, healthy boundaries, so many healthy boundaries. And listening to your partner's boundaries as well, because you, you know, you hear the term um, lead by example, and that's very true, especially in relationships. If your partner or friend or family member can see that you respect their boundaries and how effective and healthy that is for them, then they're more likely to do the same for you. So leading by example in that regard, and also practicing saying no, like you're allowed to say no to the people you love. Sometimes you have to, to keep that relationship strong. Yeah, you're getting a lot of love on the screen. I, I see somebody saying persistence, not, uh, not patience. Uh, oh, somebody's giving you, go ahead. What? My friend, Jess out in Vancouver, Squamish. Oh, well, you know, tell us about this person. <laughs> <laughs> she is incredible. Actually, she runs an incredible company. Um, she's built it up in the time that she's taken it over from her dad. And she is honestly like one of my mentors when it comes to business. She is incredible. There we go. <laughs> okay. You got, you got a little woot woot, but she gave you a hello beautiful when she, she uh, came on. Uh, not only that, but we have Matthew Gardner here, uh, living, living life after divorce, has stopped by. SC Cutlass has stopped by. Of course, you're speaking about Jess. That'd be JWA. Is that it? 37? Absolutely. All right. All right. Leave no contact. Go Ghost is here. One of uh, our great supporters to this network. Uh, Tina Real, 1111, 1111. And Tina, I got you, Tina. Tina's here, uh, as well as other on our pilot show of the Coach Jess show. I just like saying that, and I sound like Sean Connery when I <laughs> say that. Look. So, so uh, the Coach Jess show, the objective is for you to feel free to come in to this approachable person and, uh, and uh, feel free to talk with her. But uh, we've got some things we want to cover on the pilot show. That doesn't mean we're ignoring you. So feel free to comment if you like, especially the JWA37, because she gave us a woot woot. And uh, <laughs> Jess Power Unite. I kind of, hey, you know what? Hashtag. First one of the show. First one. Hello. Hashtag <laughs> Jess Power Unite. That was actually like why we met and became such fast friends was because the Jess. Oh, really? So it's Power a JJ connection. JJ connection. You guys Not have like JJ have the same initials, JW. <laughs> ah. So so do you guys have like signet signet rings that you put together or clink together and then there's like this power energy thing that comes out and you guys have like need... cape uh, who needs who needs thinking rings? We don't need no rings. We got no <laughs> rings. Ring. Got the... Ring. Go ahead. <laughs> Yes, boss. We've got the power. Go ring. Yes, yeah. Perfect idea. Okay. I like it. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, Power Ranger. Shay Shay just showed up. Hey, I'm let's so give some. People. Let's give some love to. So let's give some love to Matt. Okay, Matt. I don't know yeah. how to say the last last name, but I'm just gonna go with pregnant because that's what it looks like to me. It's, it's not right, but I just want to stay pregnant. Another I know Matt. One of my Matt's one of your friends. In Vancouver, yeah, another one. No, that's not the Matt you told me about. That's the so, Matt you said you kept trying to block on social media. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start going to start trouble. What was that? Uh, I said we're going to have some rumors on our first show. <laughs> hey, it's your first show. <laughs> don't, don't do that <laughs> ours. If it, hey, if this bombs, it ain't on me. It's just on my network. <laughs> on me. Hey, that's between you and your you and Jess need to put your your rings together and go boom boom go boom boom and then the, then you get okay 
So Jess got some information for you on the screen. I'll read it to you, boss. So the coach, uh, this is what you got, coach. Uh, burnout top tip. Boundaries, I got you. But when they are hard to maintain, but when they are hard to maintain. Okay, well, there you go. There's your first one. Tackle that one, coach. <laughs> so when they're hard to maintain, it, it, you have to look at so many things about that relationship. Uh, that make them hard to maintain? Like, why is it hard for you to maintain that? These are the questions you need to be asking when you're having difficulty creating and maintaining those healthy boundaries. So is it because they're constantly pushing those boundaries? Is it because you're constantly letting them go over those boundaries? Is it uh, because they don't take those boundaries seriously? Do they not know how to put boundaries into place and have those be healthy? There's just so many questions. So you really need to try and get into the specifics of why those boundaries are not being maintained. Is it, is it more you? Is it more them? And then when you figure out which side it's coming from, then you can make some kind of action plan moving forward on how to either speak with that person or work on your own confidence and assertiveness to be able to maintain those better, more easily, for that relationship and future relationships. What if it's a work relationship? That is a bit more difficult to navigate because on top of the assertiveness, you also need to be professional, right? So we have a bit more of a tight line to walk when it's in a professional environment. But again, depending on the environment, um, which fields you're working in, you may or may not have to see that person every day. You may, you know, you have certain days where you see them all day long, you see them once or twice. So it really depends again, the specifics. And you're gonna notice me say that a lot when people come and ask me questions or comment on things, is it, you really need to dig into the root of everything and kind of decide from there what needs to be adjusted, what needs to be altered a little bit, um, what you can't alter and, you know, what you just kind of need to accept. And, and what you can ultimately avoid and get away from and, and not have to deal with. So in a workplace, it's a bit harder to get away from things, but you are able to control things still in that environment and you need to focus on the things that you're able to control. So maybe you need to move your workstation away from that person. Maybe you need to look busier so they don't approach you and, and talk to you or, or make the comments that you don't like. But whatever it is, you need to ask yourself some questions first. So... I got to give a baby roll call because Tootie Pooper 2021. I assume that is Hello. the name of 2021. Your coach just gave you a little <laughs> shout out there. Tootie Pooper. I don't know who you are, but I want to get to know you. Because what with a song? name, an Instagram, go ahead. I didn't hear you because we're, we're, I'm sorry, I'm cut, cutting in and out here. What? Say it again. Just a good name. That's a good name. There's something <laughs> wrong with you. There is something wrong with you. Did you think that's a good name? Tootie Pooper. Okay, I love you, Tootie Pooper. But you need Coach Jess to have a session with you. Do you, what, what, do you what do you do? You do the, what's that? What are your sessions? What is it, 30 minutes, 10 minutes? I don't know. What, what, what are your sessions? 30, 30 minutes. We can chat. Say it one more time because it's cutting out. Say it again. Oh, sorry. 30 minutes. We can chat for 30 minutes no charge we can talk about how i can help you what's going on over in your corner and how we can in 2d in 2D's world <laughs> <laughs> i like that name 2d pooper i'm sorry i just had okay so uh your your cohort in crime power ranger uh jess she says uh your buddy jess coach jess coach uh, she says picking your battles for sure and learning the power of saying no and disengagement Okay, I like that last word. So the power of saying no, I love that phrase. Okay, coach, what's your take on that? No is a huge word. And, you know, a lot of people need to understand that no can be a complete sentence. You don't have to explain yourself, right? You, you, you can if you want to. It depends, again, on that relationship and who it's with and, and what boundaries are being violated and um, whether that relationship has to continue or if you can literally just say no, disengage, and that's it. How, how about uh, recovery? Is it possible to have a path or make steps toward recovery in a relationship? How can a person do that if they're feeling burnt out, burned out? In the relationship, it, again, starts with questions. So you... 
something I wanted to introduce in, you know, our pilot show is uh, some of oh, our wait, art. Oh, wait, I know what I forgot. I forgot. Hold on a second. <laughs> Welcome, folks, yes, to your pilot show. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh, dun, 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 dun. Wait, hold on. Wait, I got another, wait, I got another one. I haven't used it in a while. Okay, it's, it may not sound right, but I'm going to enjoy doing it. I have to let it play. I can't make it stop. We'll just play on its own until, until I can get the mic back. And then it finally slowly lets me be able to get louder. Okay, all right. So I just had to do that. Uh, okay, go ahead. You were going to say something very important. I was. Um, something I wanted to introduce. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> right? Something I you're wanted like, to introduce. You're like second guessing this. You're like second guessing this. Going like, oh my God, this guy's crazy. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> something I wanted to introduce is um, our new three R's. Well, my new three R's. And a rebranding of the famous three R's. The reuse, reduce, recycle. Right. And so our three R's or the show's three R's, what I would like to focus on in our content here is recovery, resilience and relationships. And so over time, I'm going to teach all of you how to use, reuse, reduce, recycle in your recovery relationships and resiliency to improve all of those things. Right. So talking about re recovery now. Right. And we're not necessarily talking about from addictions, like you're speaking so in a relationship aspect, right? And so in this recovery situation, do you mean like narcissistic? Do you mean what kind of recovery are you talking about? Because like I said, I like questions. So if you like questions, hmm, are you still there? You there? I am. Hello? Okay, hello, hello. I didn't know, I lost you there for a minute. Maybe it was just me. So if we... Are talking about relationships hmm mm -hmm. how does a person recover when they feel that they're not seen or heard in the relationship so recovery starts when you acknowledge that there is an issue right so first we have to acknowledge what the issue is so the issue being not being seen and heard in a relationship so we're going to first get really familiar with the feeling of what's going on and and when those are the strongest feelings for you like what action your partner is taking or not taking that is having that effect on you right because we can't completely blame someone else for how we're feeling it's often a combination of their actions and our reactions based on our previous experiences things that have happened in our lives and what we you know have going on in in our old noggin so um when something like that happens, communication is the, is the key, right? So you want to think about, first of all, if you don't really know how to communicate with your partner well, that could be the issue A for not being seen and not feeling heard. Um, so if, if communication is already an issue in that relationship, more communication is not going to fix it. Because if you already have poor communication, just doing that more is not necessarily going to make it better. So you really need to figure out again when you're feeling those things and when they're the strongest, right? So at that point, when you're able to pinpoint those things, then you create an action plan moving forward, right? And obviously this is going to include your partner. You're not just gonna come up with some plan and put it through yourself, but there are things that you will need to do in order to facilitate that recovery and in order to start that and make that easy for both of you to do together. Right? It's not just one person working on something by themselves. In a relationship, you always have to be working on the issues together. It's never just one person's fault in a relationship. It's always the combination of both. Um, so once you're able to pinpoint exactly where those feelings are coming from, being able to communicate that effectively to your partner is also huge. So working on your communication styles is something that you really need to do from the get-go. Um, it's hard to have a relationship with someone that you can't communicate with it, when you're constantly not feeling heard, when you're feeling like you're not on the same page, it, it just adds to that frustration and not being seen. Um, so if, if the issue is that the communication is already broken and that's why you're there, then you need to start from scratch. If the issue is not in the communication itself, but a more recent change, something that has started or come from somewhere, um, 
then you need to, to kind of look at what's changed and, and what might be causing that difference now, right? So it really depends how that relationship has started and maintained versus if it's like something that's just out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Mm, I gotcha. Yeah. Coach, so you have, you have shed some light on a few things there, Coach. I do have to tell you that on the screen, your cohort in crime, JW, uh, says this is so fun. She hasn't seen anything yet why we're doing this Jess <laughs> <laughs> because we have no idea what we will do next but we know Always. it's going to be fun right <laughs> it, yeah would you just say that again but we yeah, were surprised I, so started today yeah. our, our whole everything about us is a surprise I love it. <laughs> it's a huge <laughs> surprise because we want to look as if we have no idea what we're doing <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag on the screen. I see it. Being awesome is awesome. I love that. Being awesome. Do I keep her in my life? Yes, I, I see. That's you keep her in her in your life so much. You never mentioned her to me. <laughs> I guess I'm not a part. I'm just the studio guy. Who cares? I just okay. Have to experience. Hey, see, you know, this is the fun of doing my part. Of this show, I get to do this. Hey, I get to eat on screen. <laughs> you can't do that right now. You have to keep talking. All right. So, what What are we talking about when we talk about recycle? So what did you What did you say? Re, reduce, reuse, recycle? Is that what we're supposed so, to do with pe people? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. I mean, <laughs> um. My version of reuse, reduce, and recycle is it really it builds on the original kind of idea, right? So in our recovery relationships, resiliency, mental wellness in general, we're going to have things that we're doing that are good. We're going to have things that work and that make us stronger and better and healthier. And so we're going to reuse those things because they're great. They're working. We're never going to get rid of them. They're perfect, right? We might make them better as we go on and as we develop and as we grow, they might no longer serve us at one period in our life, but right now they're working for us. They're great. So we're going to reuse those things. So that's everything that you're already doing right now that makes you feel mentally well, that makes you feel strong, that makes you feel resilient, like you can move forward and handle tough things and deal with the stress and get through it, right? So we're going to reuse the things that are good. We're going to reduce the things that are bad. Obviously, we want to get rid of them. We hope so. We hope so. <laughs> The things that aren't working, we're going to scrap, right? Just like, you know, you throw the things away that you don't need anymore. Um, and you need to be doing that with your mental clutter as well. Because, you know, we don't take the time to find what we want to allow in there. We just have all this input constantly, constantly, constantly. We never really purge things out. And so things can, you know, get up in there. And, and we have these ideas from when we were, you know, in our, in our 20s, when we were teenagers, when we were young, these things that have not been taken out and looked at and examined and decided if they belong there or not decided if we want those in the next chapter of our life or not and so we need to really take a good hard look at those things and if they're not working for us if they're not serving us if they're making things harder for us we got to dump them we got to reduce them they got to get out of here now we're do we need to do we need to make a list if that's the case we can make a list absolutely lists are fantastic and so for both of these things, absolutely. If you are having a difficult time with anything, honestly, the first thing you need to do is write a list of what's working and what's not working. And that's going to give you so much clarity in and of itself without even getting into the very deep specifics. You're able to see on a surface level, right, that you are doing things that work, right? You are doing things that work, even though there are things that don't work. And we're allowed to decide over our lifetime what works, what doesn't work, scrap it, reuse it. You know, whatever we decide with it, if it's working, not working, try it again later in 10 years, you know, things change as you change. And so something that doesn't work for you now might work for you in five years, might work for you in 10 years. But if it doesn't work for you now, you don't need to carry it with you. You, that is, now you said recycle. Did you touch on the recycle? Oh, I was so I caught up. Go ahead, coach. So recycling is kind of the two that I just mentioned, reuse and reduce, but it, uh, like together. So when we recycle something, we take the components out that are still useful, 
we bring them back down to their base parts to what they were initially and then we reuse them in something else right so not everything is a complete reduce or reuse sometimes there are parts that work and there are parts that don't work so when we recycle something we're going to go through that thing that uh, concept or that relationship that recovery that mental wellness the coping skills whatever it is we're looking at and we're going to figure out the parts that do work and we're going to keep them around and we're going to keep integrating them into the things that we do and we're going to get rid of the ones that don't work again right but it doesn't have to be the whole idea it can just be a part of it so we would really have to know what's working and what's not working not just based upon our emotions or not just driven by speculation, but by facts. Absolutely. And you are your best fact checker, right? So no one knows more about you than you. So who's going to observe this information, this data? Who's going to keep this research, right? You're going to research yourself, right? And, and the more you do this, if you, if you research yourself to the extent that, you know, I have, <laughs> you're going to end up with a manual on yourself. <laughs> Like what works and what doesn't work. literally it's fantastic it's something that you can go to in your darkest times and it's there it's for you it's this works for me this is what i need to do right now so you don't have to spend time you know uh searching your brain for the right way to do it because you've already done it and then you wrote it down because you liked it so much and now you're going to use it again and again and again until you find the next thing that works better for you and uh we got to go to the screen and uh that's uh that's uh that's pretty good you are not your thoughts <laughs> or who others think you should be um that's right Jeff. just trying to go deep on us man that's just like now i gotta think about things go ahead coach i just wanted to read that to you that's how she lives her life deep that's why we get along we've had many deep conversations but this is a really really good point it's an incredibly good point. Thoughts are thoughts. Thoughts are not reality. Thoughts are not things, right? Thoughts are, are what's playing in our head. It's your own reality. And if you decide to accept a thought, you're not necessarily accepting facts or evidence or uh, research backed information. You're accepting something that's popped into your head. You know, I've had weird stuff pop into my head. So not all my thoughts are facts. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, now, now, okay, I didn't expect you to say that. Now I'm scared. <laughs> Everyone has weird stuff pop up in their head. Oh, all right. Time. Okay, here you go. This, you know, this, so when you have weird thoughts, is it like this? <laughs> you just got, okay, you, you, you're scaring me. You're scared. Okay, so Shay Shay 3178, I just love that. That should be like a show. That should be like a show on TV. You call it the Shay Shay Show. Shay Shay 317 of 3178 says, yes, I agree. Others option, others or other options of you. Oh, I, think opinion. I get it. Others opinion. Hey, thank you, coach. <laughs> Cause I, I just read what I see others. I got to translate others. <laughs> opinions of you shouldn't define you. Others opinions of you should not define you. Uh, your take on that. Thank you. Shay Shay. That's beautiful. And it reminds me of one of my favorite quotes. What other people think of you is none of your business. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Right? Uh, so only a small version of you, they'll see you for 10 minutes in their day. They'll see you for five minutes, right? Like that's not you. You are not an event or an activity that you can take some such small parts away from and figure out who you are as a person and what you represent, your values, your integrity, all of that thing, like all of those things rather. It, 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 it really just, again, adds to that clutter in your head if you're constantly walking around and thinking about what that person thinks of you. I used to have a huge issue with just hearing people around me laugh. And I would always think people are laughing at me. And when I realized yeah. that I am such a small part in people's day, that when I go out and walk around, I'm not pointing people out and laughing them and doing things like people are so in their own world and reality that you might make a small dent in it. But they don't know you, the, the true you, like you know you. And so they can think whatever they want, right? Like it's not going to affect the way you live your life. It shouldn't, right? No, no, it really shouldn't. But uh, I, I want to clear the record right now. 
that I am not laughing at you if you're having any of those those uh, private moment thoughts uh, hey, that <laughs> that you may that you may that you may have, Coach. I just want to tell you, Coach, I, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing. I'm not laughing at you, right? Just because I'm smiling doesn't mean I'm I'm laughing at you. I just want you. I just want you to know that. Okay, so uh, when it comes to the opinions of others, thank you, Shay Shay. I see what you type. Uh, we know that it, it was a typo because uh, she corrected me. My my bad. My bad. Uh, I've just I just learned how to read about two weeks ago. Uh, Coach is helping me with that. Thank you for the hearts, all the love on the screen. It has been on our pilot show approximately uh, about 30 minutes, 30, almost 31 minutes. Uh, <laughs> what is that? Quietly what? Uh, okay, quietly charting, chartling over here. Oh, chuckling. That's got to be chuckling. Okay, so we may have signal go in and out because just just so you know, this is a West Coast, East Coast connection. And what I mean by that is this is an international connection between the both of us. Uh, and uh, we wanted to come with this pilot show so that we can get all the kinks out. And thank you to everyone that we're getting the kinks out. Uh, Coach Jess will return. Uh, she, uh, we, we have this thoroughly planned. We have this so thoroughly planned, we are unplanned. I don't know if that makes sense. But... Coach Jess will be back in just a moment because she is bringing her picture back in. She is in Canada, the east coast of Canada. So this is an international show that we are putting out here so that others can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're chuckling. Is that what you do? You quiet chuckling? Okay, so let's get Jess back in here because this show is not about me. It's about our star for the show and our pilot show. We are here to get all the kinks out, introduce you to Jess. And uh, recognize that uh, it is her show, not mine, but it is on the Narc Abuse TV network. Uh, so there she is. Okay, so I was just telling everybody that this is an international show. Hopefully she can uh, get her signal there for a second and she can hear me. So this is an international show in which she's in Canada. I'm here on the West Coast in California, uh, and we are working together to put this pilot show out to uh, see our setup, uh, what we're doing as far as the studio's concern and other things. So hopefully you will be able to join her again as we go back and forth with this show, and uh, you'll be able to see us working together. Um, hopefully, hopefully we got you in there. Is she, is she there? Is she there? Are you there? Can you hear me? I think she's trying to hear me. Okay, so... Uh, what are some of the main themes that we're going to be talking about? Uh, well, she brings up the content, um, and uh, we just work together. Uh, hopefully, we will get her signal in here any moment now. Uh, let's Not see again. here. Let me do that. Okay. So can you hear me? Uh, or can you just say testing one, two, three, so I know that we at least have a signal? And uh, those of you that have joined, feel free to let me know what the image looks like to you as we test out everything here on this pilot show. Testing. Okay. One, two, there we go. You, keep, there keep, we go. Yeah. Well, keep doing that. So I know I can hear you. Can you hear me by any chance? I can hear you perfectly. I'm sorry. This we're going to work out this connection thing. That's all right. Hey, you know what? Um, this whole pilot show is for those who recognize it's a pilot show. Yes. <laughs> so it's not for those who want to critique it, uh, because <laughs> as we discuss, the opinions of others should not define you. <laughs> here we well, go. You. <laughs> you. Hey, I'm here to learn. I'm I'm here to learn. I'm not here to to be cool or anything like that. I gave that up many years ago. Uh, I've already lived three score now, so I'm I'm pretty much uh, cool with that. Channeling brilliance takes effort. Ooh. Okay, Jess, your buddy Jess, coach, keeps keeps putting up a bunch of future hashtags. You need to hashtag that one. I like that one. Channeling brilliance takes effort. Okay, so we, again, have an international connection. Uh, how this uh, relationship, uh, this uh, quote-unquote uh, mental health relationship uh, started was that you appeared on the Narc Abuse TV network, and uh, we were able to do a show together. 
Uh, she, see, uh, look at that. See, Shay Shay, thank you, Shay Shay. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, feel free to talk to us during the show. This is a very interactive show. That's what Coach wanted, and that's what I'm trying to set up here for her so she can run uh, her show on this platform. But uh, Shay Shay, look at me. Shay Shay, 3178. Shay Shay, Shay is her first name. I know it is because we've talked before. Uh, Shay says clear. Is, is clear on her side. She's got a good connection. Um, we appreciate everybody that is here helping us work out the kinks, and uh, we just wanted to see what it looked like. We could have waited, but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to get this out and get the kinks out and uh, get ready for the first episode, uh, which will take place. Well, you just have to keep watching Narc Abuse TV and the Coach Jess 2021 page, and you'll find out. Uh, all the other things that we have planned. We just need to get the kinks out today. Uh, we are testing our link. We're testing a number of things to see what uh, improvements we're going to make. Um, Coach, you with me? I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you when you Not speak. No. And when you speak, I can hear you. <laughs> if, you keep, if you keep talking, I know it's working. <laughs> so, so I need to be quiet. Sure. But go go ahead. Any <laughs> other any other symbols of wisdom you want to put before us huh. um let's see well we talked about the three r's and the new three r's what we're going to be covering in our series together or my series uh on your network this summer which is fantastic um but i also wanted to very much set the tone and just kind of give a bit of a clearer picture for some people who don't maybe not know what a life coach, mental wellness coach, what that, that really looks like, what kind of a relationship that looks like when you work with someone like that. Um, and so one of the, you know, one of the things we can do is really just take the part coach. And if you think about coach and you relate it to other coaches um, in sports, in whatever else you're being coached in, uh, maybe in clubs at schools, all that comes to mind right now is debate club for me for some reason. Um, <laughs> So when you're being coached, you really, you have this period of time that you work with your coach and they're teaching you strategy. They're helping you to look at your skills to see what you need to improve. Um, they are giving you ideas for how to test things, setting up action plans for how to improve things while you continuously test them and make them better, right? So you have this practice with your coach. You have this time where you're learning and they're teaching and they're mentoring in some capacity. And then you play the game. And when you play the game, you don't really have your coach on the field with you, right? You're by yourself. Well, okay. you have your teammate, mm -hmm. but they can't, you can't go and ask your teammate a question necessarily while you're playing basketball, right? You're going to get a ball to the face. Um, so you really, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you really need to take the time that you have with that coach and make sure it's worth it. Make sure that you're getting all of the knowledge that you can out of those periods of time so that when you're playing on the field, you know what you're doing and you can make those decisions and you can try new things and you can integrate the strategies, the action plans, the processes that your coach has talked over with you, has shown you, has demonstrated with you and has explained to you why they are important and how they work and the best way to integrate them into the things that you're already doing in your life, right? So it's very much a coaching relationship even in the sports aspect, right? It's very much that small period of time you're learning, you're strategizing, you're getting deep into the root of things, what you're good at, what you needed to improve in. And then you go and you play and you, you figure it out in, in real time. You figure out those things in real time. You try things and see if they work. And if they don't, you bring it back to your coach and you talk about it again. And we figure out the reason why that's not working. You talk about it again, you try it again, you try new things, right? And so having a coach is not necessarily having someone to tell you how to run your life. They're really someone that helps you to assess the skills that you already have and the ones that you need to improve and then how to improve those things, right? You've got some love on the screen. By the way, thank you very much. Uh, Mohammed is here. He's been uh, uh, through uh, the shows many times here on this platform. Thank you for uh, your support and stopping by today. Uh, Recovery with Mandy has stopped by. Authentically, Suge is in the house. Uh, and uh, we got to go to Coach. We got to look at uh, we got to look at what Jess says. You're Coach Jess, but we have another Jess. Uh, your buddy Jess says, help you question your questions. 
with compassion and great personality. That sounds like that sounds like she's describing you. Uh, maybe a little bit. <laughs> go, on, go, on, go on, be hung, go, go, go on, be humble, girl. Go on, be, go, on, go, on, go on, be humble. Don't even try to see you trying to see. Trying, go on, give them that smile. Go on, give them that smile. And try to be humble. So uh, this pilot show again for those of you who have just joined. Unlock your destinies here, Ravens here, and others that are passing through. We appreciate it. We needed to get this out to everybody so we can get the kinks out. And <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm laughing, everybody. I'm just the guy helping out. It's her show. Uh, but some of the stuff you're writing, Jess, the other Jess, the other Jess that's here writing stuff, Coach, she wrote, and ridiculously good looking. Okay, now, first of all, you need to stop <laughs> talking about me like that, girl. Because this <laughs> is just the way I wake up. <laughs> that's, just the way, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Wait, hold on, wait, hold on a second, hold on a second. Wait, hold on a second, wait, hold on a second. Wait, hold on a second. <laughs> they're not laughing at you, but they're not laughing at you, by the way. Let's just clarify that for what we said about 10 minutes earlier. <laughs> they're they're laughing. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, wait, hold on. No, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. She said that's for both of us. So don't even try to take the compliment that I can get in on. Thank you very much. She said ridiculously good looking. All right. All right. I don't know if that's a compliment. Wait a minute. Now that I think about it. All right. So what was that? What was that, boss? What would you say, coach? Oh, now the butter is up. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Butter you up. She she needs a whole slab to, to butter me up. I don't care. All right. So, um. <laughs> When it comes to, <laughs> oh, look, hey, uh, Shay Shay's still here. She hasn't, she hasn't decided to run away yet after all of our silliness. And leave no contact, go ghost. Thank you for your laugh out loud because that's pretty much what the pilot show is. When this is, when this is unearthed in the future, people are going to see all of our future shows and go, like, man, it's a really good show. And then they're going to see how we got started. They're going to go like, man, they really were pathetic. What happened to them? Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Matt, Matt, I'll see you later. We'll, we're going to do our show prep together. Uh, everybody, everybody, check out Matt's book. Uh, such good vibes, Matt says. See you guys soon. Take care, Matt. Uh, thank you for stopping by on our pilot show. Go ahead, Coach. I'm sorry. You said something. I cut you off. I was just saying thank you for joining us. Yeah, because you can get more of Coach Jess. Uh, we will let you know when, when the actual episode is going to happen. It won't, it won't take long. We'll, we'll get it back up. Uh, we'll get that first episode out. We just wanted to come out and uh, play today. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of technically what this is. We just wanted to get out and play and test out, give a test drive to what we're going to be doing and uh, say hi to everybody. Thank you for all the hearts. Uh, this is the Coach Jess Show. This is not Narc Abuse TV. It is on Narc Abuse TV Network, but the Narc Abuse TV is a separate show. So uh, some of you have uh, have asked me that question. Uh, why are we doing this? Uh, how did this all get started? Uh, I'll dip into that right now, and then, uh, Coach, you go ahead and take the show back over. But I just wanted to tell everybody here in this pilot show, uh, I got a lot of requests to bring Jess back on my show because, uh, as some people wrote, there was this chemistry between us to the show that we did. Uh, and I went like, no, because she's better than me. I'm not going to bring her back. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. So, 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 so uh, what happened is, is I got a lot of requests. Uh, when I say a lot of requests, I'm talking about over 25 people wrote me about the show she did and how they wanted her to back on. Now, a lot of people write me and say they want this person back a number of things and it happened, but they wanted to see her on a regular basis. And I went like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I wrote a few people back. I went like, thank you for your comments, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, no, it's not going to happen. The reason why is because she has a life. <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh, that guy, look at that. Okay, I like that. It's a level thing. Game recognizes game. I like that. <laughs> game recognizes game. Okay, that's pretty good. I like that one. All right. That, but because that's what actually happened. Um, it did not take us long uh, to decide that this is what we're going to be doing and what direction we were going to go in. Because the content comes from coach. Coach is, is bringing the content. 
Uh, so she is kind enough uh, to uh, to take the lead in this show. Uh, uh, the pilot that we're doing right now was all about us making sure that people understand uh, that we are indeed here for those who want it. And a lot of people wanted this. Uh, and I'm not talking 25 people. A number of people, uh, once I, I tested it out and asked a few people, this is what they wanted to see both of us working together uh, to have this platform. A lot of this she's hearing for the first time uh, in, in depth. Uh, we talked a little bit, but I saved this for the show to tell her. Uh, well, you know, she's getting that Canadian, Canadian blush going on. Uh, so this connection, this international connection, people wanted to see. Uh, and they wanted to be able to come to this platform once it gets going. So we'll get it going once we get to our first episode. Uh, we will have this as the first season. The summer will be us doing it. So that kind of gives you an overview without making you get uh, too bored with this. We appreciate all the support on this pilot show. Each show will run approximately one hour and five minutes. So, yes, if you look at your clock, not that you, you've been doing that, uh, we have been about 46 minutes in. So there's more we're going to talk about. I just needed in the, virtually in the middle of the show to kind of let you know how this got started. Uh, my platform, this network, Narc Abuse TV Network, is really based upon what people want to see here in our second season. They wanted to see Coach Jess. <laughs> so uh, give the people what they want, as the song goes. So uh, that's what we're doing today. We're giving everybody that wanted it, uh, wanted to see this, uh, what they want. And uh, we expect people to be joining us as we get into the actual shows. But today, Coach, is your debut. And uh, you you did really, really well. But I've got some things now I want to talk to you about, if you don't mind. I want you, if you can, please highlight to me. She didn't know this was coming, by the way, you guys. Uh, highlight to me, uh, how can somebody... Re reduce, reuse, recycle, how does that principle come into play, that methodology, when it comes to trauma? So trauma, of course, is a very, very complex subject. Um, so anything that I'm doing is very simple explanations of things, of course. Um, so when it comes to trauma, so reusing, reducing, and recycling, there are some people who tend to live in cycles of trauma. And this can be due to many, many reasons. Um, usually a lot of chaos uh, in childhood is one of the main reasons that this kind of thing ends up happening in adulthood where we just constantly need to be in this cycle of drama, trauma, and chaos, right? It's just where we feel comfortable because that's where we grew up, right? That's what we know. And so if you find yourself in this cycle, if you find yourself constantly creating drama, constantly um, eliciting or creating huge, strong emotional reactions in yourself and others, and that makes you comfortable, then you are likely controlling that trauma cycle that you continuously keep going through. And so in order to bring the reduce, reuse, recycle into that concept, we can, again, we have to acknowledge what we're doing. So first we acknowledge that we have control over the cycle. We are making the mm -hmm. decisions that are drawing us back into the cycle, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we want to figure out why we're doing that, how we're doing that, what behaviors, what actions, what thoughts, what emotions are leading us back there. And Got we it. need to create this list and we need to reduce them, right? So we're gonna get rid of those things. We're gonna get rid of the things that are constantly bringing us back into these huge emotional reactions that make us feel traumatized over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna get rid of those things. Uh, we're gonna look at the things that we do that make us feel better when we are putting ourselves through that cycle. And in, this is a little bit more complicated than simply looking at the things that uh, don't work because just because something is making us feel better doesn't make it healthy and that often is what contributes to, to Being locked into that cycle is we do things to make us feel better in the short term that are not good for us in the long term So we need to look at everything that's working for us take an objective stand and If you really can't you can ask someone to look at it with you and just pick those things out of there that are unhealthy 
reduce them, get rid of them. The things that are healthy, good coping strategies, good relaxation techniques, things that are helpful in the long run, we're going to reuse mm -hmm. those. We're those things. We're going to make sure we're doing more of those things. And if you don't know what those things are, and if you have zero of those in your um, knowledge base right now, find some. There are so, so, so many ways to, to create your own stress management plan that is unique to you, unique to how you respond to things and that is helpful for you, but you have to try things. So try them all out, see what works, see what doesn't, and reuse the ones that do work. When we go to the recycling stage, now we're going to look mm. at the things that we don't quite understand fully. We're going to mm. work at those things we've left off the first two lists, right? We don't know if they're really good, fully good, or fully bad. And not everything is going to be one or the other, like I mentioned. So we're going to list the things we haven't thought about yet. We're going to list the things that we need to acknowledge that are also playing a part in this cycle, this trauma. Um, this chaos that we keep creating and putting ourselves in. Um, and, and we're going we're gonna to take each of those things and in each of the things that we're doing, in each of the thoughts that we have, the, um, the schedules that we keep, the actions that we, we do and, and the behavior that we maintain, we're going to take, the, again, the things that do work and the things that don't work and separate them. They don't have to stay in the same space just because they came together, right? So we can take out right. something that and still throw away the rest of it like they do with recycling. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Hold on. Did you just lead us down a road back to recycling? No, I would never. Would you, wait. So what you're saying is that would make the planet a better place. Can you imagine if we all did these things, not only with our garbage, but with our thoughts, with the things going on in you our mind? You have just blown my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like. Wait, hold on. Wait, I got something for blowing my mind. Hold on a second. Here, uh -oh. hold on, hold on a second. Here, we Here we go. Hold on. Here. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's what you just did to oh. my head. You just shot. You just shot bullets of wisdom into my. Okay, that's bad. I shouldn't say that. Let me. Let me. <laughs> let me scratch. Let me scratch that. Hold on a second. Wait. Even worse. Hold on. Hold on a second. Okay, all right. I have to change that button. Okay, so um, what you're saying is is similar to what uh, we got on the screen, Coach. It says on the screen. This is what it says: how to set future Jess up for success. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, I read it, but teach me. Sometimes you got to do things that. The you right now might find hard, but the future you is going to thank you for. So if, you know, with, with, in regards mostly to the way that you deal with stress and trauma and the way that um, you use coping strategies in a healthy or unhealthy way. So you can have one coping strategy that in one instance is healthy and in another instance is unhealthy. So, you know, a good coping strategy is when you're having a tough time, you got to talk to your friends. You want to let it out, right? But... If every single time something goes wrong, you go to one person, and if that one person is not available, you lose it, that is an unhealthy way of being dependent on someone now to reduce that stress for you. That's no longer in your control because you need that other person, right? So we need to create strategies that are in our control that don't depend on someone else. You know, have a variety of people that are there for support, right? There are so many groups and things you can join online where you can meet people everywhere, right? And you can talk about the things that are the same, right? That you're dealing with that, that you're struggling with that are the same. You don't have to have one person for everything. And in fact, if you do, that's a huge responsibility for that one person. Can you imagine how they feel when they find out that you're the only person they talk to and then you're unavailable one day? Like that's a huge responsibility to put on one person. So you need to have a group. You need to have more than one person to be able to talk about those things with. And so this is just an example of a healthy coping strategy that be, can become very unhealthy if you don't look at the way you're using it, right? When uh, we look at the screen, we, we have uh, Shay Shay has uh, given us some happy smiling faces uh, because, you know, I'm a goofball and you're the genius in the show. Uh, so we appreciate that. We've been told game recognizes game. You got to set up the future Jess. 
we we've got uh people that told us such good vibes a number of things uh we we've got is encouragement on our pilot show in which we're able to look back and and uh scrutinize our work uh, to a measured degree so we can give you the best product possible uh in the first episode when we bring it together so we just wanted to do this without uh, major preparation but a lot of discussion we've had a lot of discussion not a lot of preparation we just wanted to put it up here and see what happens and uh we already know what the chemistry was going to be like uh again Canada and the US has put you and I together here <laughs> and uh you are taking the lead and I have enjoyed myself doing this with you but <laughs> I got to ask you about this cuz I was just wondering You came up with something and you dropped it, you know, on me. So, you know, here we go. I'm going to ask you in front of everybody. What is hashtag fill in the blanks? What is that all about? That's your yes. creation. Wait, all of this content is your creation, but I'm just curious. Hashtag fill in the blanks. What is that all about? I want to help you fill in the blanks of the things that you're dealing with. I want to help you find those answers that are going to allow you to look at your decisions, your behavior, your um emotions in a different light, in a different way, right? Not necessarily right or wrong, good or bad, just different, right? Because there's so many different ways we can look at the exact same thing and come up with a different conclusion or a different thing to try. Um so it it it's really just about helping you to fill in those blanks, helping you to find like choose that adventure, right? Uh okay. to just figure that out for yourself because that's what coaches do. We don't give you the answers, we help you find them. If uh if we could coach, that was beautiful. Fill it in the blanks. Hashtag fill in the blanks. Go ahead everybody, you can use that. Just coach came up with that. Coach came up with that. Fill in the blanks. I just want to say this. Uh how about you and I say hi to Chelsea Jules. Hi, I hope Chelsea. I said that right. Thanks for joining us. She says I'm hello so to us. here that that is say Chelsea right I did read that right I think we have to move that screen closer I'm going to have to make some serious changes in here so that I can read everything quick, quickly and correctly and give it to you as we do the show uh again this show we're getting all the kinks out pilot show uh the first episode will come your way but we did not want to wait we wanted to put this out now uh and um you were awesome today you were awesome mm-hmm. You were ser- seriously awesome. Uh yeah, well, you know, I'm the guy in the booth. I want everybody to not watch me because I'll be over here eating and doing all kind of stuff over here. You scratching my back of my neck, other things. But okay, so we didn't have like an intro. We don't have set music yet. There's a bunch of things that we thought about. We I was thinking, you know, we should have all this stuff prepared and ready to go. And then we just said, "No, we just want to get out there and let everybody know Here we come. We are going to be here because this was something requested by the viewers of Narc Abuse TV Network as well as Open Session Podcast. Uh I tested it out a number of different people asked their opinion and this is what they wanted to see. Now that they have seen it, they will of course let me know what they think. Some of them have told me already off off screen here. I can see that they they like listening to you the more i i'm quiet the more they enjoy it so we're going to work on that so that you don't you're on screen all the time did you do you see what she's writing you know i'm going to i'm going i'm sorry there's no way i'm going to be serious doing this i'm going to do my best but sometimes <laughs> people write stuff and it's just funny and i like jess i like you too jess but i like i like she's funny field of dreams build it and they will come Okay. I don't know how we can What was that? We might have to invite her to be a guest. Okay. She going to have to pay to be on the show though. She going to have to send send me some donuts. She going to order me some donuts. I want some <laughs> donuts. That's my thing. I think I'm going to have that. I'm going to be like in the in the Ocean's 11. I'm going to be like Brad Pitt. I'm going to be eating the whole time during the show. I'm just going I'm going to be like I'm going to be like 900 pounds by the time we get that into our fifth or sixth season. I'm going to be like You go like I remember Paxton when he was only 200 pounds. <laughs> She'll send you some Tim Hortons donuts. <laughs> oh, hey. 
Canadian. Oh, okay, you know what? I'm going to tell you. I'll be standing right there at the border going like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> give me, give me, give me. <laughs> donuts, donuts, donuts would be given. Donuts, no problem. Okay. Hey, you know what? She's on. Wait, wait, hold on. She's on the show, dog on it. She's on the show. I don't care. I know you're in charge, but whatever. She, she's on the show. Even if I don't get a donut right now, she's in. Uh, okay. All right, Matt. I'll still look at Matt. Look at Matt trying to get in on this. <laughs> okay, Matt. You bring the milk, Matt. I got milk and donuts. Matt's, Matt's in. <laughs> I'm telling you. No, wait, it's we're going to have our, we're, it's a party. We're going to have our, we're going to have our, our, our show meeting. We're going to have our show meeting. And, and then see this jest, you guys, the jest in the show meeting is not the same as right now. I just want to give you guys that right now. Look at, look at, she's shaking her head. She you know, she's going to get all serious and go like, okay, this is what we're going to talk about. This is I want to, one day I want to do a bunch of behind the scenes stuff so you guys could actually see her when she's in, we're in a meeting. She's like, okay, Paxton. So, so now, well, Paxton, now I want you there. Don't be late. We're going to have a meeting. Chop, 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 chop. <laughs> uh, don't even try to go there. See, she's trying to act like she, she's Miss Innocent, but when it, when it comes to business, she's like, I am serious. Stop goofing off, Paxton. <laughs> chop, chop. I, this is this show is gonna catapult me into Oprah status, <laughs> and I like, no, honey. I said you gotta eat a lot of bread. You gotta eat a lot of bread to be an Oprah status because she is. A- <laughs> what about that stage? The loud. That's right. That's right. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be engaged for like twenty years and have nobody marry you yet for being Oprah sure. status before. <laughs> so you gotta live. <laughs> You got to be like 60 years old and they finally propose to you. <laughs> All the Oprah people are going to look for me now. I'm, you're not going to find me ever again. Like, I'm going to be I'm gonna be in the river somewhere. <laughs> okay, so Matt, we can get Matt on the show too. Anybody else? Anybody else want to Shay Shay? Anybody? Chelsea Jules? Anybody else want to be on the show? Canadian? Yeah, everybody. You're like, everybody. Turn on your cameras, everybody. <laughs> Just turn <laughs> We are going to uh, we're going to have a show that's going to give you a number of different things. Uh, we have a couple of minutes before we need to go, but I just want to tell you this: uh, we will be taking uh, a number of different things. You, you'll see, uh, surprises are coming your way. Uh, we're going to have to go, so that means uh, I get to uh, again. Remember, we're getting all the kinks out. Uh, thank you for watching us do that. Uh, but uh, I just want to tell everybody, <laughs> just. Coach, you are awesome. Uh, the auxiliary Jess, stand-in Jess, she was good too. Backup Jess, she was good too. I didn't know that was happening today. Oh we just God. stuck her in. All right. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening here. All right, here we go. So uh, um, we're getting all the kinks out, even this part. Everybody, thank you. We've had fun. Um, we're going to end the show. It is one hour and three minutes, counting down. Uh, no, I'm not leaving till it's one hour and five minutes. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to just keep talking. Coach, you got any? She was not nervous, too, you guys. Okay, no. pilot show. Total chaos. <laughs> Jess, you were the only one that kept it real. Nice and cool. Coach, how'd you like your first, your, first, your first go at this, your pilot show? It was so fun. I can't believe I got this <laughs> over again. Well, um, Jess, uh, our on-screen Jess, thank you also. Back to you. I see what you wrote there. And happy weekend to you, too, everybody. Uh, she got this under her belt now. Now she has something she can go back and review and decide what she wants to do different and tell me as her engineer in the booth. Uh, yes, everybody, please. Hold, hold, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Shay Shay says, thank you, Jess. Thank so thank you. you, Jess, very much for doing this. And everybody that wanted to see this, the pilot show is out of the way. All right? You did great. You did great. Everybody else, thank you so much. Uh, I agree with Matt. She is a natural. Hashtag that. You should hashtag that. She is a natural because you are. I tried to tell you. This is good. All right, everybody else, we love each and every one of you. Seconds are counting down. Leave, underscore, no, underscore, contact, underscore, go, underscore, ghost. I love you, my dear. Thank you for being so loyal and supportive. All of you, Shay Shay, everybody. Um, Episode one, coming your way soon. We're out. Love you guys. Bye.